slowly be possessed by madness. I want to start doing some director highlights or director spotlight videos because there's so many great filmmakers out there that I uh, admire and uh, I would love to just showcase uh, the tapes that I got from them or the DVDs in some cases because sometimes you know you can't always get certain shit on tape and uh, I mean you can get it out you can get it but I mean I just don't happen to have it yet so uh, we're gonna start this off with talking about a, a very uncomfortable film that I actually watched with my mom and my brother and that is the New York Ripper this movie uh, matter of fact shout out uh, Ebon Press that is uh, out of the States and they put out the zombie comic, the maniac comic, the beyond comic, like all of like the kind of Fulch universe stuff they're putting out. Uh, there was a comic that was, uh, there was a character, I think it was called the bottom feeder and it was based on Joe Palato's, uh personality, so to speak, like who was Captain Rhodes in Day of the Dead. And he also has a bit appearance in Dawn of the Dead, but uh, New York Ripper, this movie is uh, very disturbing. It's a, a, a jallo. It's uh, a, a, about a serial killer. Like, the, the, the whole Jallo thing is still, like, I'm not that deep yet, you know what I mean, in terms of my knowledge on that, that sub-genre of film, because uh, there's so many goddamn good ones, there's so many ones in general out there, you know, so uh, I, I just actually got a new one the other day, or for Christmas for my girlfriend, it's called uh, The Iguana and the Tongue of Fire, which I've yet to watch, put out by Arrow. Uh, I will check that out eventually and give my thoughts, but this movie, New York Ripper, like I don't really want it, it it's it's a it's a movie about a murderer and he there's there's scenes in this film that are more fucked up than the actual murders to me and uh just to not spoil it but the scene with the silver toes guy like that is fucked I watch it with my mom you know what I mean like I once watched pink flamingos with my mom and my grandpa and my grandpa like he thought it was fucked like he thought it was a riot he was laughing his ass off the whole time but I was just like this is fucked and that was my that was a movie of my Uncle Mike's, and he showed it to my grandpa. My grandpa just thought it was the fucking fucked, so he had to show us. My little brother's like five years old watching that, but crazy shit. Uh, New York Ripper, there's a really good uh, edition. I think it was Blue Underground that just put it out. I want to get that eventually, but uh, for right now, I'm just rocking with the DVD-R. So. Moving on to the Gates of Hell trilogy, uh, starting with City of the Living Dead, the Beyond, and then House by the Cemetery. This is an amazing trilogy. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to uh, your like your entry your entry level horror fans because it is kind of especially Gates of Hell. Like you're like right it's right off the gate you're gonna be like what the fuck's going on. But once you realize you're looking at like two two stories happening at once or, or, or two two chain of events happening at the same time until they meet up. You know what I mean? So. Uh, once you can get your head around that, you, you're golden. I mean, I wish I knew the, the name of the special effects artists in these films off by head. And that's a shame that I don't because I do respect these films so much. And uh, I, I love the process and all that stuff. So uh, I definitely need to chop, uh, you know, brush up on my, my special effects wizard chops, if you want to call it that. But uh, it starts off with City of the Living Dead, which has Christopher George, who, of course, is in pieces. He's in... Uh, countless other films from the early 80s and late 70s, I believe. He, he passed away in the early 80s, I believe. Like, by 83, I think he had cheesed by then. But uh, he, he plays, like, a, an investigator, an investigative reporter kind of guy. And uh, he's just trying to get, get the scoop, so to speak. And then at the other... At, he, he links... Like, the fucked up thing about this movie, it's all over the place, first of all. He, he goes to a graveyard to investigate this girl's death. And then ends up realizing that she's buried. She's been buried alive, and it's it's incredible. I love the two uh, cemetery worker guys. Hilarious! Like they're just sitting there eating ham sandwich over top of a dead body. It's it's insane. But um, I actually think that the blonde haired guy of those two cemetery workers. I think he was in Cannibal Holocaust. Um, I could be wrong on that. I'll have to check. But uh, it, it's it's a great film. It's it's really a. Uh, a twisted supernatural demonic heavy special effects kind of film so if if you like say your dawn of the deads but you want more uh like insanity to it more like i don't even know how you could describe it but just like these insane shots of like uh like 
with when you think of like uh dawn of the dead a lot of the special effects they were kind of quick shots you know what i mean like the girl's arm getting bit and like the dude's head getting blown off like with this film like they show shit and they keep showing it like the the chick's eyeball like jesus christ so moving on from gates of hell also known as city of the living dead uh the beyond came out and this copy of the beyond like all these these two tapes came from my uncle's collection they were specialty ordered through a magazine i've i've tried to get him to uh to give me like the rundown and apparently most of the films he was picking up were was from a company called luminous video works uh i know there's they're up here yeah luminous film and video works works spelt with a u instead of a instead of an o but uh this one's actually put out by cult classic frighteners uh, uh vipco i guess it was vipco but yeah hell of a cover and this movie's uh i, I think like like these movies go in order of how I enjoy them. So I love City, and then The Beyond is pretty dope, and then House is I'm okay with House, but uh, The Beyond is is more uh, clinical. Like th th when I think of The Beyond, I think of those scenes in the hospital and like the blood, like that little ginger chick, and it it's just creepy, man. These these are movies where you just have to watch. You just have to watch them, man. Like they're so out there, and watch them. Uh, with an open mind because I know they can kind of be like if, you, if you're used to watching like Freddy Krueger and shit like this This is not Freddy Krueger. This is like, you know, this is how what I would describe as like your Freddy Krueger and stuff is like your your A-list and what I mean by A-list I mean by like most well-known You know what I mean? Because most people if you say Freddy Krueger, they know who Freddy Krueger is. You say Lucio Fulci, they might be going, huh? but uh, You know the beyond is it, it's it's crazy it's it's fucking crazy. The chick with the like the blonde chick, she's actually gonna be at uh, Shockstock this year. So stay tuned for some cool shit about that. And then finally, we've got House by the Cemetery. I only have this on DVD, but uh, as you can see, I only paid seven bucks for it, and I've even, I've seen it even cheaper now since then. So uh, I got screwed. But this this one's pretty dope. It has an annoying kid. He's not as annoying as like the kid in the Babadook, but he can get kind of annoying. But I mean, th their job is to be annoying, I guess, little bastards. But uh yeah i don't know i would recommend the trilogy uh but like i said have an open mind if you've never experienced anything like this yet uh finally we're moving on to uh lucio fulci's zombie also known as zombie 2 also known as like the remake or uh the the unofficial sequel to, to dawn of the dead which uh it's not but it's unofficially fans say I, I i think it's pretty fucking dope but i don't think it's an official sequel i just think it's his lucio fulci's take on this zombie shit like to the fucking nth power man like this this movie starts off with a bang literally like <laughs> if you've seen it you know what i'm talking about uh you got i'm blanking on the on the dude's name but he's like an english once again investigative reporter kind of guy and uh he's he gets involved in this with this broad whose father's lost on this island and then they ended up going they end up going to like they leave new york and go to an island somewhere and they border up they border a uh or they charter a ship or a boat rather and uh from there they end up going to this island that's just been like totally riddled with with uh doctors experiments and shit and voodoo magic and it's just like like when doctors are experimenting with voodoo magic like it's not gonna go good and you get some of the most iconic memorable zombies of all time these zombies look like dirt like you know like the, remember back in the day when there was like that cinnamon challenge like people would take a spoonful of cinnamon and like they would spit it out instantly and their lips would be all covered with that shit like that's how these zombies look like they just look filthy and like the, the big fat zombie on the boat i love him he's probably my favorite in the movie and then of course you got like I don't know what you call him, like, Maggot Eye. He's, like, the the zombie when, you, when you're talking about Lucio Fulci zombies. He's got the fucking maggots coming out of his eye. I actually did a drawing of that a long time ago. I wonder if I could find that shit. But an another fun fact to mention about uh, the Gates of Hell trilogy before I forget. I actually did have all three of them on a tape that I made. But I can't find them, which kind of sucks. But I did find... I did find... Uh, one of the ones that I made that has zombie on it. So this one has Monster Squad, I Come in Peace, and Zombie. And this one right here has got uh, Just Tales from the Crypt. So there is a Gates of Hell trilogy somewhere down here. So I will show that if I find that eventually. But uh, yeah, also I want to shout out once again the uh, Ebon Press putting out those Fulci comics. Like, god damn, those are fucking fantastic. And those I'll be doing a video on as well because I got... Uh, where's my microphone? Did it fall off? 
No way! No way! My microphone was all the way over here the whole time. Holy! Was it? Is it still pick it up? Could it still pick it up? I don't know. We'll just assume that it picked it up decently, okay? I know it probably didn't, but fuck! That pisses me off. But I'm not losing this video because it was a good one. So. Uh, like I said, I will be doing a, uh, a thing talking about uh, books and stuff, but also I will do the Ebon Press comics because I have a few of them. So uh, thanks for watching YouTube. I know it was a shorter video, but uh, there'll be more coming soon. Thank you.